Well here we go, we're back again with another preview of Sunderland vs Rochdale tomorrow night at 7.45 and on Saturday Oxford vs Sunderland down at the Kassam Stadium and can Sunderland make it another two victories? First of all, should we all give Stuart Donald a load of praise for the way the season is starting to unfold bringing Phil Parkinson in with Steve Parkin and they're doing a good job at Sunderland Football Club. Donald has his haters, but really, should he be given the praise? Leave your comments down below in the comments section. Let me know your thoughts on Stuart Donald. Should he be given the praise for bringing in Phil Parkinson and Steve Parkin? Personally, I think he should stay till at least the end of the season. And Phil Parkinson, the man Stuart Donald brought in, it's doing a grand job at this moment in time, but there's still plenty of time to go for the ups and downs, tops and turns. Things could also, you know, anything could happen at this moment in time. We could climb to the top of the table. We could drop out the playoffs. Let's hope the form continues to keep going the way it is and we'll continue climbing that table. I believe we will. Two shout outs today. Somebody wanted a shout out on Facebook called Adam Paul Young and also... On Instagram and the new YouTuber Sunderland Road to the Prem. That's a new YouTube channel. Have a pop over, have a look, and subscribe if you think it's a good channel. Be much appreciated. Four people got the correct score against Ipswich. One nil to Sunderland. It was Chris Hem, Frank Osborne, Bradley Young, and Jerry Springer. I mean. Jonathan Springer, sorry, not Jerry Springer. Where the hell is Jerry Springer? That sprang into my mind, didn't it? Jonathan Springer, well done. All collecting 10 points and then we'll go to the table to try and win that lovely Mad Mistake t-shirt. So yes, Phil Parkinson is seeming to be turning this whole season around, turning it around, getting the team playing together in a great squad outfit, great team etiquette, really playing for each other, you know, helping each other on the pitch, you know, one big united front. That's what we need from Phil Parkinson. Now the game against Ipswich on Saturday, another clean sheet, which was absolutely fantastic to boot. But this time last season, if we had the same team and Jack Ross was in charge, would we have folded and end up letting a goal in against Ipswich? So tomorrow night, Sunderland welcome Rochdale to the stadium of light. Unfortunately, it'll be the first league match of the season at home I will be missing. But I do wish all the lads and all the fans all the best and hopefully we can get a result. I have things to do. Unfortunately, family life takes over now and again. I will be able to get back in time and probably catch it live online somewhere. I'll pay me £10 at the SAFC official website and I'll be watching a live stream. I will be there though for the next two home matches, Bristol Rovers and Fleetwood, Joey Barton's Fleetwood. But tomorrow night, we welcome Brian Barry Murphy's Rochdale up to the stadium of light. Brian Barry Murphy, the manager, was a defender. He played 66 games for Rochdale and scored one goal. He's been the manager since 2019. He was player manager at first, but now he's the manager. Rochdale have sadly dropped down the league in the 18th place. The one where they've played 30 games, they've won 9, drawn 6, lost 15 on 33 points with a minus 13 goal record. So at Rochdale, we know we should be putting these teams to the sword. No disrespect to Rochdale, every game is a difficult match and this will be a really hard match at home to Rochdale. Rochdale will put up one hell of a fight, but we have to battle that and combat it and come away with a victory. I'm going for 2 0 home victory. Watch your score predictions, leave it down below in the comment section. Yes, I welcome Rochdale fans up to the stadium light and have a safe journey home. Rochdale was founded in 1907, 113 years young, at Spotland's the home ground, Spotland Stadium. I do have a capacity of over 10,000 crowd. So, Rochdale, you know, done really well in the last few seasons, staying in League One. Let's hopefully they can stop in League One this season. But they had a mixed bag of form of late. On Saturday, they did pull it out of the hat and got a draw against Doncaster, which away to Doncaster is a cracking result for Rochdale. The game before that, yet again, brilliant result at home to Shrewsbury, who had been playing in the cup against Liverpool a couple of times. So a 1-0 victory for Rochdale. Three points there was absolutely vital for Rochdale. 
and the game before that, they lost to MK Dons at MK, which is a hard place to go. Against Gillian the Drew, two is the peach at home. The game before that, they got beat at Wickham, which is a tough team because Wickham are wearing in the top two and we are second place at this moment in time. So they won 2 1 against Rochdale and then Rochdale went to Bolton, like most teams do, apart from Sunderland, and beat them 2 0. So Rochdale, a mixed bag of form. They're getting four points from the last two games, which is like an upturn on their form. So hopefully we, we can put them, you know, we need to put them to the sword early on, get a couple of quick goals, and let's get this game over and done with. I'm going for a 2-0 home victory. So hopefully it'll be three points against Rochdale and we can climb the table because tomorrow night it's Coventry versus Portsmouth. So yes, someone is dropping points above us and hopefully we can leapfrog one or two teams tomorrow night. And then after we beat Rochdale tomorrow night, I love the confidence, we go down to the Kassam Stadium at Oxford. Yes, Oxford, Carl Robinson's Oxford have been in great form in the FA Cup. Unfortunately, they got beat against Newcastle, unfortunately, in extra time. Now, that might have taken something out of Oxford because the next match at the weekend gone, they got smashed by a well-informed Peterborough side, 4-0. And before that, they had a quite good run of form. They beat Blackpool at home 2-1. The drill away at Gillingham won the peach. The drill at home, nil-nil to Ipswich. So they were in good form, but they've dropped down to 10th place now. And they played 28 games, won 12, drawn 8, lost 8, got 44 points. Only 4 points behind Sunderland, but with a plus 14 goal difference. So Oxford's form might start a dip now after the FA Cup. You know, when you play a big game against a big side in the Premier League. And yes, compared to League 1, Newcastle is a big side in the Premier League. And you play that and you, you, know, you give it everything on the park. They give a great performance. Oxford Collins is Oxford absolutely fantastic at the Kassam Stadium. And they've only got three ends to the ground. The other one's a car park. Strange scenario. And you give it everything in the FA Cup, you might fall flat in your face next few matches because after the Lord Mayor show, you build yourself up, you're really determined to win that match and you give it everything on the park. And after that, you might just fall flat on your face. And they did against Peter Rivers. So hopefully next weekend, against Sunderland the Kassam Stadium, we can take advantage of that. But I'm not going to be too greedy. I'm kind of seeing 2-1 away big deep. And I'm going to predict a 1-1 for the score predictions for 10 points for the T-shirt. So tonight, it's a double whammy. Two score predictions. Sunderland beat Rochdale. Oxford versus Sunderland. Put your score predictions down below. And if you get them both right, you get a bonus of an extra 10 points. Oxford have some really good characters and good players in that side of them. Jamie Mackey, we all know about Jamie Mackey. Then there's Liam Kelly. I think it was Kelly who scored a fantastic free kick against Newcastle. Marcus Brown, who was in brilliant form before the Newcastle match. And we got Josh, is it, I forget his name now, Ruffles. Ruffles is a good player as well. So Oxford has some class quality players. And at home, they've been playing well this season. So hopefully Sunderland now, because they've turned the table, we can go down there and stay unbeaten for the rest of the season. So I'm going to go for a 1-1 draw. But in my heart and my heart and my head, I want a 2-1 away victory. But I'm not going to be too greedy. Four points in two games. I said 13 points out of five games. The four home games and one Oxford away match. 13 points will be a good tally to take from them matches. You are the greatest sports noggin. Can you predict the correct score against Rochdale? The correct score against Oxford and come away with 30 points. I know 10 plus 10 doesn't make 30, but 10 points. 10 points? 10 points? Been a while since I've had 10 points. A good, good. Well, I've never had 10 points. I've never been a drinker. Never ever been able to take 10 points. I like three or four at the most. Absolute max on a good day when I'm at the match. Otherwise, it's one or two. For well, three or four max, so 10 points bonus if you get both score predictions right. Good luck for the weekend. Let's hope we can get two good results and continue this great form, climbing up the table and get promotion to the second tier. Like Phil Parkinson says, the team now is in ready, ripe and raring to get pushed into promotion into the second tier of football. Back to the championship where we belong. So don't forget, to leave your score predictions down below and also tell me what your thoughts are on Stuart Donald. I think Stuart Donald did a great job when he came in. It went a bit flat, but he brought in at the right moment in time the right manager with the right squad, with the right backup assistant manager and all these players. People like Stuart, Steve Parkin who's came in. Phil Parkinson is the right man for the job and Phil Parkinson will get Sunderland promotion this season. Let's hope I haven't put the mockers on it now, eh? Touch wood. Right, thanks for watching. We'll see you later. Enjoy the match.
One last thing, don't forget to pop over to SAFC Fan TV and watch our first live broadcast from Spark Radio yesterday. It was the pilot show and please subscribe to that channel as well as this channel. Much appreciated. And if you see our top interviewer at the match, you know, Sean Middleton doing an absolutely fantastic job. Pop over and have a chat with him. He'll interview you for the, after the game and put you on SAFC Fan TV. He'll also be down at Oxford. So pop over and see Sean Middleton, really friendly guy. And don't forget Dino, the top cameraman. Absolute great dynamic duo.